In this series of stills, the mannequin is being pre-oxygenated as in the normal situation. On completion of pre-oxygenation and the patient being ready to intubate, the ODP passes the laryngoscope through a side flap which the anaesthetist accepts. The ODP then proceeds to provide an endotracheal tube through the other flap on the other side which the anaesthetist accepts as well and gets ready and positions himself or herself to intubate. At the point of intubation, the anaesthetist realises that it's going to be a difficult intubation and requests a bougie from the ODP. The ODP passes it through the side flap. The anaesthetist inserts the bougie into the endotracheal tube all the way and lets the curved end of the bougie stick out the front end of the tube. He then uses the bougie that is sticking out in the normal fashion and inserts it into the patient's larynx using the laryngoscope. The positioning of the tube nicely contours the tent that is above and is not in any way resistant to the passage of the tube. It actually holds it in place quite nicely. Once the bougie is passed into the larynx, the tube is uh, railroaded over the bougie and gradually the bougie is removed. That can be done either by coiling it, as this anaesthetist has done, or it can be done by pushing it out of the flap, the front horizontal flap of the tent, for the operating department practitioner to accept. The stills show this being done from the bird's eye view and from the lateral side to ensure that a reasonable view is demonstrated of the use of a bougie under an aerosol shield tent. It is not recommended that any part of the tent is cut because of the collection of expired air and droplets in the roof of the tent. Um, the use of the side flaps, the front flaps and the horizontal flap are adequate to position and insert a bougie in a tracheal tube. It must be remembered that the bougie must be passed into the endotracheal tube inside the tent to minimise the risk of viral contamination moving outside the tent by passing the tube back out or passing the bougie in and then asking an ODP to railroad the tube as would normally be the case. Altogether, the five flaps in the tent allow for adequate ODP assistance and that ODP must be wearing an adequate amount of upper body PPE, even though the tent it is in place, to ensure that the forearms and the chest is protected during the opening of the flaps.